the walk on bowl. My opinion on it is I would love to see Tate start at quarterback because, hey, we have nothing to lose, in my opinion. We're already 6-6. Six and six. Uh, But do you think Manny would put, like you said, if, if, if we lose this game, this is a losing season for Manny. So what are your thoughts on Tate starting, and do you think he, he will be the starter, if you had to guess? Yeah, um, I'll answer that question at the end. But I think – I think that there's – look, I, like you said, uh, in, a, in like a vacuum, you got nothing to lose. You're 6-6. Six and six. The only issue I have with that is uh, you've talked so much. Manny has talked so much about, uh, you know, the team unity and the team coming together. Uh, and before a season, the team needs to rally around one guy. My issue is Miami's losing to FIU, and Tate Martell is still at home with his girlfriend. Mm. Miami is in the cold rain losing to Duke and he's taking Instagram photos in New York with his girlfriend. This, that's not a great look. Like I understand the Tate Martell Hyde coming out of high school and coming out of the transfer portal, but there's that to me is, is really not a good look and it's concerning. Um, uh, the other thing is, look, I had a chance to see Martell uh, at the spring game and then at all the fall practices did not look good at either spring game did not look good in the, Fall practices like missing throws against not even a defense, um, and a lot of that has to do with what Enos was trying to make him do: play under center, uh, which he's not used to. He changed his drop back, he changed his footwork, he changed his uh, grip on the ball. So he was learning a lot. So that's part of it. But if you were to put Tate Martell out there in the system that we've run our year, he'd make a fool out of himself. It would not mm. be good. So if you go like a spread option type offense, if you make a new playbook during these practices, then yeah, I could see how he could be successful in it. But if you send him out there in the offense we've run all year, it's not going to be pretty. Woo! Against Louisiana Tech. So do you, do you think Manny's going to put his, uh, you know, a winning, a winning or losing season on the line in the hands of Tate Martell? Do you, who, who's your guest to start the bowl game? Uh, to be honest, if I had to guess right now, I'd probably go to Nikosi Perry because mm. for all the issues that Nikosi had last year, he's really been like he's been the quarterback on his best behavior this year. He's been the only one really without any issues. Um, and I think he's a talented guy. I don't think that this is a great scheme fit for him, but I do think he has talent. I think um, if they were to simplify the offense and spread it out, uh, I think he could thrive. And who knows, maybe Manny could use this as kind of – a tryout for that type of system. Um, but I, I just, I don't see Jaron. I think Jaron, um, after being pulled against Duke, almost checked out mentally. Um, I hope I'm wrong, but that's just my thought. Um, and I think if he doesn't get the start, he could be on his way out uh, into the transfer portal. Um, this just, look, I, this is not based off of any information I have, but my gut is telling me Nikosi is going to start. Okay, okay, that's going to be interesting. Uh, Miami versus Louisiana Tech, uh, basically a home game for Louisiana Tech the day after Christmas. Um, that's going to be interesting. I'm interested to see what happens in that game now that we got the speculation and we get the. I'm excited to see some of the young players. But, Matt, I appreciate you joining us tonight. Go ahead and let the people know what y'all got going on uh, at Kane's Insight, man. Yeah, go over to canesinsight.com, check it out. Uh, we, you can go check out all the stuff we had up for signing day. We did a uh, player profile on every player who signed. Uh, they had a podcast up last night recapping signing day. Uh, I've got some interviews with coaches from, from talking with them yesterday that I started putting up and I'm going to keep putting up uh, for the next couple of days. So there's a lot going on in the site. Uh, definitely go check it out, canesinsight.com. All right, man. And uh, you can find Matt on Twitter. And uh, you on any other social? Any other? Go ahead and shout yourself out, my guy. No, I'm not any social man. I'm just, I'm just a Twitter guy. Uh, okay. Matthew underscore Swero. That's S U E R O. If you want to follow me on Twitter, uh, I post all my articles there. I'm always down to talk canes on Twitter. Uh, always down to talk canes wherever. Uh, hey, Matt, man, I really appreciate this, man, and thank you for giving us the interview tonight. I know the people uh, in the chat right now really appreciate it. Thanks a lot, brother. Yeah, no problem, man. Thanks for having me on. All right, man. We'll see you next time, Matt. All right, thanks. All right. The way he hits the hole, and he's really hard to bring down. He's a small guy, low center of gravity. 
And if you don't come, you know, to take him down lower. It, it, it's looking bad right now for Utah. And right now, even if they come back, there's no way they're making the playoffs. If they're doing any of these guys any favors, and we're never going to get better if we keep on playing musical chairs. And the way it looks like it's going, it looks like we're going to keep on doing the same thing going into the spring. And it looks like the same thing might happen next season. So I just want the starting quarterback to be named so that starting quarterback can actually learn, grow, and develop instead of having a quarterback competition every week. And, I mean, it's not all his fault. I mean, the Kosey Perry, I think he's better than Jaron. Basically, at this point, you know I was going to bat for Jaron Williams, but really I just go to bat for whoever's the starting quarterback. But, I mean, I think Nikosi should be the guy. But the thing with Nikosi is, like, the coaches, I don't know what it is. The coaches just never really believe in him. He doesn't really get a lot of chances. Like, if he makes a couple of mistakes, he automatically gets benched. And then Jaron Williams, man, I mean, Jaron Williams at times, he just looks inexperienced. But, I mean, I, I'm just really frustrated with the whole quarterback situation. I wonder, you- I wonder how good Nikosi would look if Manny Diaz came out and said, Nikosi's our guy no matter what. Like he yes. did with Jaron. I wonder how Nikosi, when that question needs to be asked, that I wonder if Nikosi knew 100% that no matter what I did tonight, I'm going to be the starting quarterback, how he would play. Yeah, and you damage, you damage the man's confidence. I mean, the man's confidence has already been hit several times, although we don't see it. I mean, he's made an Instagram post. I don't know if you saw, but he had the selfie in the mirror. And he was talking about um, how he's just a young kid trying to live life, trying to be happy and things like that. So, I mean, it's obviously affecting him. Somebody put a somebody put a quote out and it said it. Somebody tweeted this. They said Tate Martell has uh, missed several games due to personal reasons. Jaron has missed practice and he's threatened to transfer. Nikosi has stood strong from day one. Exactly. This man, Nikosi Perry, Nikosi Perry, you can tell the kind of person Nikosi Perry is, man. I mean, Tate Martell, I saw a couple of things about Tate Martell. A couple of people saying he's skipping practices, they hang, hang out with his girlfriend. I don't know if it's any truth to that or anything like that. But I mean, Nikosi Perry, is the, he's the definition of loyalty, man. And I mean, at this point, man, I would have already named Nikosi Perry the starter. I don't get why we keep playing musical chairs at quarterback, man. It just goes to show you the inexperience Manny Diaz has of being a head coach, and hopefully he learns. Do you well, think? Yeah, he'll and learn? I, I think I just I, I don't I don't know, man. Because look, and this is you know me, you know I'm a big Tate Martell fan. You know I, I like Tate, but and I don't know what's going on with this guy's uh, reputation. I don't I don't know what's going on, but letting him go back and forth it sets a bad. Um, it, it's a bad look to the team, letting him go back and forth, letting Jaron miss practice. You know, Jaron miss practice just because no personal reason, just because he wanted to miss practice. And, you know, and then you let Cleveland, uh, I think it was Cleveland Reed, the offensive lineman. He goes into the transfer portal, probably didn't get a lot of people want his services. I don't know that for fact, but then you let him come back. You go and get Jeff Thomas. And I understood that because you weren't the head coach back then. But, JT, it, it, you, you're playing football right now in Florida. If your coach is just letting people quit left and right, what are people going to do? Run over them. Well, yeah, and it happens on my high school team. I mean, it, favoritism is everything, man. I remember a couple of years ago we had a talented quarterback, and he got angry at the coaches, cussed them out. Um, coaches said next man up. He came back a couple of hours later. So I mean, it it just shows favoritism, and it it doesn't send a good message to the locker room because coming from a guy like me that has been through some of the similar things, I mean, the locker room it messes up the locker room because then players feel feel like it's unfair because that player gets special treatment. You got players wanting to transfer because things are even. They're not getting the same opportunities, man. So I mean, it, it's just a whole. You can tell Manny Diaz inexperienced as the head coach, man. You you can just tell, well, man. And the, and the and the thing about it is, the thing about this is, once 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 a coach sets a tone, and he has set a tone. And remember, we're we're losing some seniors, but this is a fairly young team, especially on the offensive oh, side. Oh yeah. So oh, yeah. once you once you set that tone that you're letting people do whatever they want to, and you're all buddy buddy. You can't just flip the switch. You become an enabler. You you become yeah, I, an enabler. I don't, I don't know if you can come back and say, okay, now I'm going to be you a hard next season. 
the only way you can do that, the only way now that many dads have set that being the culture is he has to wait for all these freshman guys he recruited to be all the way out the next four years and then try to implement it and the and the next coming class. But I mean, even that.